There are a lot of misconceptions about how much Burning Man costs, how much the tickets are. I've heard folks say, oh, you have to shell out at least $10,000 to get to Burning Man. And that could not be farther from the truth for the vast majority of burners. Hey everyone, it's Chrysantilus. Thank you so much for joining for another video today. And if you're new here, welcome. We are a realm dedicated to psychedelics and sacred plant medicine, all about demystifying and destigmatizing the trip. Now here at Chrysantilus, we also stand psychedelic culture and cultural events, events including Burning Man. Some of the first videos I made when I revamped my channel and got back onto YouTube two and a half years ago were Burning Man videos. You can check this playlist for previous videos I've made on the subject. And one of the main logistical questions I get from everyday civilians and non-burners is, how do I get to Burning Man? How can I get to Burning Man? How much does it cost? I want to go, I've always wanted to go, how do I get there? So today I am going to give you five practical steps to get to Black Rock City in 2022. Let's get into it. Number five, game plan now. So it is February the 2nd, 2022, as I'm filming this. Ticket sales are going to start soon. They're gonna start soon. So getting to Burning Man last minute is possible, but it's not the easiest time. It's not what I would recommend, especially for virgin or first time burners. I highly recommend that you hop on the planning train as soon as you know you want to go to Burning Man for sure. You can even tentatively plan if you're mostly sure, but get your game plan together right now. It's never too early to start planning to go to Burning Man. I mean, next year Burning Man plans start as soon as the burn ends, especially in terms of camps, never too early. I highly recommend that folks don't wait, even if they're unsure, and this is particularly because of ticket sales. Ticket sales happen in phases. So the tickets that I will be applying for this year will come out late February to mid-March. You can actually go on to the Burning Man website and see when the ticket sales you're interested in will drop. The ticket info has been posted. Last year, the tickets were priced at $4.75. All the ticket sales and programs are gonna be found at tickets.burningman.org. Something great about Burning Man is the accessibility of these tickets, especially the low income ticket. I've never had an issue purchasing the low income ticket. It looks like this year they're renaming it to the Ticket Aid Program. So if you're in need of a low income ticket, please be sure to be on the lookout for the Ticket Aid Program. Burning Man saves $5,225 tickets to folks with qualifying applications. So you do have to apply for those tickets. I've never had an issue securing them in the past. Speaking of prices, my number four tip for getting to Burning Man is to save up. So there are a lot of misconceptions about how much Burning Man costs, how much the tickets are, how much of a financial commitment it is. I've heard folks say, oh, you have to shell out at least $10,000 to get to Burning Man. And that could not be farther from the truth for the vast majority of burners. Now, if you're trying to have a glamping experience or a luxury burn, I don't know about that side of things. I'm sure it could cost well over $10,000, but for your average burner, that's not gonna be the case. I've gone to Burning Man twice. The great thing about Burning Man is oftentimes you're able to split the costs. So something like a tent, you might be able to camp out with your friend and you don't have to get a tent. I purchased a Kodiak tent because I know that I am committed to being a burner for the foreseeable future and that having invested in a nice desert tent was important for me. I actually found my Kodiak tent for like three or four hundred dollars on Facebook Marketplace. I highly recommend checking out used Kodiak tents. If you're looking at getting a canvas tent, you might be able to find a really solid deal. But yeah, let's talk expenses, right? So for me, my two burns have cost anywhere between $1,500 to $3,000 total. Again, that $3,000 was because I started actually investing in gear and burner things, but you don't have to do that. Many camps will actually have extra tents for you to use if you don't desire to purchase or take out your own. Your main Burning Man 
expenses are actually not going to be at Burning Man. Once you get to the festival, everything is free. Food is free, drinks are free, love is free. Um, everything is free except for if you want a guaranteed cup of coffee or lemonade or sweet tea or something like that. Then you can go to the Center Camp Cafe and uh, they have lovely drinks, including delicious chais and I love those folks. But yeah, you can spend money there. And that's like one of the only places I'm aware of that you can spend money at Burning Man. But what is going to cost you is going to be your flight, your hotel, the Burning Man tickets, which again, for the low income ticket, that could be $225. Still nothing to sneeze at. Camp fees. So I'm gonna talk about this a bit later, but I highly recommend camping with a camp and camps have camp fees, right? Because you're gonna get on a meal plan, you might get a shade structure, a lot of labor goes into a camp. So, you know, fair energy exchange. The Burner Express, so that is the bus that's gonna take you from the airport to Burning Man. I highly, highly recommend getting a Burner Express bus ticket. It will clear up the headache of getting to Black Rock City and you actually get to bypass the line of cars and motor vehicles, which is Excellent, because I've come to Burning Man at days where I got on the Burner Express. I had a friend find a spot on an RV so that they didn't have to pay for a Burner Express ticket and wait 20 hours in line. Yeah, whereas I just got to ride right on into the city. So uh, if you think, uh, what's the worst that can happen if I drive a vehicle to Burning Man? If you're coming on opening day, the worst that could happen is waiting in the longest line of your life. And there are maybe porta potties around, but there's not really anything around except for motor vehicles in line with you. I've seen it with my own eyes before. I've been in absolute disbelief. I didn't know that lines could be that long. It's like a traffic jam from hell. And I don't understand how you just like don't run out of gas or I don't know. I don't wanna think about it. It's really stressful. But yeah, get that Burner Express bus ticket. Maybe in the future I'll go through an item by item list of prices for Burning Man, but $1,500 to $3,000 is probably what you're gonna be spending on this week. Number three, stay in the loop. So there are Facebook groups. I know when I had my first burn, there was definitely a 2018 Burning Man Virgin Facebook group. I'd highly recommend getting on that and looking for Burning Man Facebook groups to join. Maybe there are regional Burning Man Facebook groups for your region. Jackrabbit Speaks is an email list that you're gonna wanna get on and they will send you important information about the Big Burn, including ticket information and all the good stuff you are going to need to know. I will link them in the description. There's also a Burner Express plane that I believe will take you from the Reno airport straight to Burning Man, which sounds awesome, but I think it is pricier. But who knows, one year I would love to save up to do that because that sounds like just so much fun and to be able to see Black Rock City from the sky, oh my goodness. The Jackrabbit Speaks is a news and storytelling email list that you can hop on. All you have to do is go to burningman.org forward slash news forward slash J-R-S, and that'll get you there. Just sign up for the email list and subscribe and they will send you what you need to know. They are Burning Man's official newsletter. Additionally, stay in the loop with burners you might know in real life, folks who are tentatively planning a trip to Black Rock City, and just any local burner community that you might have. I suggest going to Burning Man meetups. Even if they're virtual, it's good to get to know more folks and you'll get to meet folks who are burners and are just like you. I am privileged enough to live in the lovely city of Baltimore, Maryland, where there is a thriving burner community. And both Baltimore and DC have several camps. So we have burner meetups and local events and even some nearby regional burns. So I highly recommend getting to know your local Burning Man community. Number two is a shameless self plug. Check out my Black Rock City Living playlist. And I'm especially going to say, check out the first two videos on that playlist. 
these are two prep videos. So in one of them, I go into expectations, and in another one, I go into what I pack for Burning Man, some of what I pack, not all of what I pack, but some of the important things that I pack. Watch my Burning Man videos, that's number two. Please watch my Burning Man videos. I put a lot into it. I even have a tent tour video, and I have made videos at the burn, so you can see a bit of that and get an idea of what to expect there. Number one, my number one tip for getting to Burning Man in 2022 is to find a camp. Now, you may have heard something along the lines of, you don't need a camp, you can just go out to Burning Man, save some money, take your car, rent an RV, do it yourself. Honestly, the amount that you're going to have to spend on gas and water and food and resources, you might as well just go with a camp. You might as well just go with some camp fees. It's going to all level out in the end. I don't really think you'll save any significant amount of money not going with a camp. And if you're an inexperienced burner or even a virgin burner, I highly recommend going with a camp as a means of harm reduction. Can you do it alone? I mean, if you wanna figure out how to get enough water out to the middle of the desert for drinking and bathing, and enough food to last you, by all means. It just, I personally don't think it would be worth the labor. Whereas you could be putting in communal labor to assist a camp and be in community. Being with a camp is great because you have eyes on you. Being with a camp is awesome because you're in community. And camps will take extra steps to make sure that you have a safe burn. For example, my camp would put together events and gatherings that are like consent-based seminars and harm reduction seminars, and they gave everyone a necklace with our camp name on it that actually lit up and was really dope. It lit up like in rainbows and it was really cute and it had, it was like wood and glass. I still have it at my house, but Anyways, let's say you end up somewhere unconscious. Let's say one of the worst case scenario things happen and you don't know where you came from, you can't really talk, but you are around other people. Having a necklace on with your camp name on it is an incredible tool for harm reduction in the event that something happens to you, you're not able to communicate or you're not able to properly recall, folks can get you back to your camp safely. Having a home base is really important. Burning Man is like one big game of tag and you don't wanna necessarily be tagging the entire time, right? You wanna have a nice home base, have a shelter. I can say some of the benefits for me for camping with a camp has been the water that's provided. There's endless water, endless Gatorade, endless abilities to take shower, not really endless showers, like we try to conserve the water. Uh, my camp also had a sauna, like an entire geodesic dome sauna. My camp cooked really healthy foods. I loved signing up to be on the cook team to make the foods, especially like dinner. They let spice everything and they put me in charge of spicing and honestly that's where i got my spice badge from having a soup like this big and like this tall and being told all right who wants to spice this and just being like i feel called to spice this and it turned out absolutely chef's kiss delicious there's so much fun to be had at a camp. So much community. Our camp had like a living room outside of the kitchen where folks were just at all hours of the day. There's always folks to chill with. If you need help, there are camp leads. We also had an entire tool trailer, right? So when I got my bike lock stuck all the way across on the other side of Playa, I was able to get a bike from that camp, come back to my camp, get a hand saw, like bike back to that camp and saw my bike chain off. If I didn't have a camp, I would be pretty much SOL in that situation. So yeah, 
They are a resource. Camp Leeds are some of the dopest folks at Burning Man and some of the most beautiful examples of leadership that I've witnessed with my own eyes in my short lifetime. And camps are fun. They're a fun time. My camp had like a chill out zone. They had a tent for sleeping. They had a cool out tent where temperature was kept down and it was dark. There was a tent for intimacy called the Yes Tent. And I'm talking big geodesic domes for most of these. There are many places within a camp that you can go do what you would probably do in your tent and you don't have to be in this small cramped little area of your tent, especially for like a midday nap, let's say. Your tent is going to be hot and it is going to be bright, even with a shade structure. So going to the giant like cool down tent is awesome and amazing. And it takes the pressure off of you having to spend so much time in your little tent. So it's great to have the experience of looking out for other folks, feeling like you're personally looked out for. I know I felt and knew that the folks at my camp had an eye on me as a solo woman burner. There were 80,000 people at my last burn. You know, not all of those folks are going to have my best intentions at heart. So it feels really good to be around a bunch of folks that do. Highly recommend finding a camp to get to Burning Man. And you know, if you find that you can't afford it this year around, highly recommend saving up for next year's Burning Man in 2023. I'm sure we'll be there by the time we know it. Yes, this is like my one yearly vacation that I have been taking and relying on. We haven't had, you know, big burns the past two years and that's been a struggle. I didn't go to the Renegade burn. I did a bit of the 2020 virtual burn, but I am seriously looking forward to this one this year. If you're at Burning Man, let me know. I hope I run into some of y'all. And that is pretty much it. If you enjoyed this video today, please consider subscribing to my channel. I'm making my way to my first 5,000 subs and it means a lot that y'all support me and watch these Burning Man videos. You can also find me on Instagram and TikTok. I am at Chrysantilis. And if you're interested in financially supporting our channel, you can rep the realm with our awesome merch that I design all myself. And you can get one of your own little keep it trippy tings on our thread list. The link for that is in the description. And if y'all have any questions about how to get to Burning Man or need any clarification, write a comment. I reply to all comments. And I hope to see y'all out in the dust. Keep it trippy.